Almighty. And this is the dark match for TNA Impact on the week ending of September 3rd. I am the Revolver Man. I am Christopher Says Dark Matches Mastodon of the Monotone. I'm Joe's Angel. And I'm your foxy friend Backlash. And hey, how about that Iron Sheik? He's a crazy bastard, isn't he? Here's what he's got now. It's He's going back to one of his older whipping boys. And uh, here we go. <clears throat> I wake up, take a shit, and it looked like the Virgil. <laughs> oh, Virgil. I thought he was going to go on Brian B. Blair or something. Nope. Yeah, probably Brain Blair. Um, Yeah, there, there's probably... uh. God, it, the 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 feud where where he's 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 feuding with someone and the other guys and feuding with him starts once again. <laughs> oh, Iron Sheik. Anyway, something less fun than reading Iron Sheik's insane ramblings. TNA Impact. <laughs> and you know when we said last week that TNA needs to be less boring, this wasn't what we meant. <laughs> this was an attempt to be less boring. I thought it was just an attempt to be TNA for another week. <laughs> well, it's just boring in the sense that it pissed us off more than last week. This right. will have a lot more energy if that's a positive we can say about TNA this week. It's going to cause us to be more forceful, more vocal, more angry. I, I have a high tolerance for their bullshit. Like, I, I, TNA's only ever pissed me off twice now. So if they've done something to piss me off, something is wrong. <laughs> and with that, we start. Once again, we start off with Hulk. Oh, wait. They're actually outside the impact zone. Mm-hmm. I thought that should be mentioned at the very least. It actually looked like a pretty good set. I will admit that. It it looked grander than, than the equipage that they usually have. I thought it was it the is- same set they used for lockdown. Uh-huh. It's the same set they use any time they leave the impact zone. So it it looks less car- it looks more professional. I will give you yeah. that. It's yeah. far more professional looking than the impact zone setup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, anyways, uh, start off with uh, what else? Hulk Hogan coming out. Uh, if someone would give me a refresher course, did this guy have his sunglasses on or off? Uh, uh, I believe he had I them. I think on. they were off. Oh, why does he do this every week? I don't know, but we actually got a nice pan around the arena and a lot of available seats available in wherever the hell they were. Alabama. <laughs> Somewhere in Alabama. Yeah. Alabama. I apologize. And you know they, they had to have been giving away free seats. <laughs> don't worry, Revolver. Just to, kinda, just to kind of fill out the audience beforehand. When you can't even get people to go to this shit for free... Uh, I think you really need to evaluate what you're doing in this business. It's WCW levels. We're going to see the half the empty arena ball here soon. <laughs> Yay. Um, basically, Hogan talks about the, the match that Sting is about to have with Flair. Flair versus Sting! Yay. In 2011, people! Smell oh, the pilot! And if, and if anyone loves that, like, basically the stip is that Sting will re- retire if, uh, if uh, if he loses, but he wins, he gets to face Hulk Hogan, which is quite the prize. Uh, I please God, no! You get to humiliate yourself and another person, and possibly kill the other person in the midst of it. Oh. You know what really gets me about this? It's happening in two weeks on Impact. <laughs> they have a pay per view coming up before that that I am sure they do not have a full card for. Yes, but don't you know the model is dying. It's already dead, according to the TNA higher-ups. <sighs> My God. Why even fucking bother? They're, they're still bitching about the network, which, as if that's a that's a very first-hand priority, and as if we were even introduced to the network beyond uh, Mick Foley, who is now out of the company. I honestly thought that plot point had been dropped. Well, for uh, as far as I can tell, the network is just Sting. Have you ever noticed the network ever do not what Sting wanted them to do? Wait, I got an idea. What if the network is just Vince Russo's disembodied voice? 
<laughs> I don't think there's ever going to be... Russo is Dr. Clawing it up in the back. No, I mean, I mean it'd be like the powers that be in, uh, in the WCW. Oh, for fuck. Before, before they put him on TV full force. Uh, I don't think they're going to be getting rid of the network anytime soon because it's just too easy to have this weird antagonist for immortal like this you know all powerful organization and being is going to fuck them over it's an easy way to hand wave aside bad plot points and just flimsy excuses for their weak ass script right. pretty much like, what that's, is, that's all it ever was with allegedly immortal having all the power they need to invent a way for sting to do what he wants so Rather than tricking or convincing or whatever, they just have this weird group of people who somehow have power over Hogan despite not being involved in TNA doing this shit. Once again, always in Sting's favor. If they ever explore why that is, that'd be interesting, but I doubt they fucking even realize how strange that is. Mm. Yeah, well, um, Hogan goes, uh, oh yeah, Kurt Angle comes out soon after and Ooh, and, uh, Kurt Angle. and uh you'd think that he'd talk but he Hogan's like, No brother, I got something else to say. He he lays down the line that like when they came into the company, like Dixie made it a, a place in dire condition and like it's filthy and disgusting and they, they tried to give it a clean bill of health as well. And <laughs> and basically like Sting is now the cancer and he wants to cut that out. Uh, <laughs> But and then and, and by virtue of, of taking out Sting, like Dixie Carter will never, which like uh, again the the well, nonsense. Thank, like once again, the going back 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 during that stupid court battle they had. Thank God that Dixie Carter is unaware of the fact that you can appeal these things and get her case a uh, company back. But no, apparently Sting has to. Stay, has to Sting has to sting, be Sting, and then she'll get her company back because well, fuck you, this Russo's a genius. Well, it's like Spoonie like explained this over a year ago that like there's a there's a loophole the size of the Grand Canyon in terms of this like huge power struggle and that Dixie was fucking signed a contract under false pretenses and she could still take him. I mean, oh, no, because remember the judge said that it was still legally binding. But somehow she still had to pay the bills because the U.S. case law is really screwed up. Yeah, I, I know. The more we get into this, the more we'll sound like the the senatorial scenes of oh, the Star Wars like, prequels. Um, so moving wow. Back, back to impact. Yeah, Angle Angle basically acts like new uh, power hungry uh, paranoid Angle. He's going to take out the... He wants to take out every young talent in the company. God knows why. But yeah, that, he got that, better in, like, Sting. He'll make an exception. That came out of fucking nowhere. Some, oh, wait, no, 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 no. This is the main... He, he's basically doing the main event Mafia again, except he's with Immortal. This is, in fact, yeah. a carbon copy of the main event Mafia, with the exception that rather than being his own group, he's part of Immortal this time. You know what, I actually would have been okay with this angle if they had gone, like, a reasonable way. Like, I know we always say that we can book this better, but we probably shouldn't. No, I could book this better. Angle wants to take out the new talent because he's insecure because he's getting older and he doesn't want these young guys upstaging him. That would make sense. That would be an interesting story I want to watch. But, no, he just allies himself with Hogan and Bischoff, which I'll have a lot more to say on when we get to a certain segment later, but I just don't understand the reasoning behind any of this. Well, it's because he wants to get back at Dixie Carter because of the Karen uh, Jarrett situation. So he aligns himself with the group that has the man who did it! So he Also, has delayed reaction much? <laughs> Didn't this happen like four years ago? Kurt <laughs> <laughs> Angle is, is a man... Pissed off about it, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt Kurt Angle's a man who he's a, like a Klingon. He likes his revenge served cold. <sighs> but yeah, Sting at, at that uh, Sting com comes out and he basically 
says, oh, he's not, he doesn't feel threatened. He's going to, he does his whole like uh, crazy shtick. He, sa- he says he's going to start by taking out Angle, then beating Flair, and then getting to the, to the grand prize Hulkamania. And, the grand prize. And Hogan has, oh, go ahead. Yes. Hogan basically questions him and says, well, if you're going to be a, you're going to be a wise ass in front of me. I'll, I'll be the special guest enforcer in your match against o- Angle tonight, which, yeah, that, that leads to, to realistic, uh, spots. Hulk Hogan being Ugh. the enforcer? If you stare at him long enough, he's going to have to go into the back to take 80 somas, a few oxycotlins, and take on his back brace. <laughs> Maybe a few beers. <laughs> well, he's got to wash all those pills down somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So after this, we have the TNA Bountiful Glory Series expert, Matt Morgan, join the announcing booth. He is their consultant now on the Bountiful Glory Series, because this is so intricate, they had to have somebody to come in to help them explain everything. But yeah, um, I, I want to move aside and just make a point for a second. Um, everyone... Like as revealed last week, because because Crimson was attacked by Samoa Joe, he's now out of the the now out of the Bound for Glory competition because he's due to injury. Now, a, bu- a bunch of us probably slagged off the the fact that uh, he was getting a huge push, basically a Goldberg push, and that like he was he has an undefeated streak that just keeps g- growing, and like he's leading the 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 Bound for Glory series with his 50 points above, above everyone else. So they, last week they decided they're just going to throw all this out the window. Like that, <laughs> that like all that build up, like despite it being too hasty and it not being properly handled, all that build up now fucking went out the window. How many times like, did we say all of us that TNA was just going to ask pull the complete, all the results completely away and do what they always wanted to do from the start. And they have. Samoa Joe has become their plot device to get who they want in the tournament. And guess who they want in the tournament? Wait, I can't say that because their match is next. Gunner versus RVD. Oh, <sighs> and for what it's worth, like, these guys, these two actually kind of, kind of went on something of a, of a nice spot clinic, and then, then Jerry Lynn came in. <laughs> like they they didn't they didn't do so bad especially Gunner which which surprised me he's he's usually a little sloppy but but fucking suffice it to say Jerry Lynn comes around and RVD doesn't want to want to have anything to do with him because he's been ruining his matches but then he gets involved by I believe tripping RVD and uh, and allowing him to to get involved after which Lynn starts smirking like yeah but Lynn Lynn pushed him off the top rope actually oh, that's Gunner hit. Gunner hits his finisher, and that's it. And then suddenly, Lynn, Lynn is, like, doing all his shit, and I guess we're building to another Jerry Lynn RVD match. Because well, you gotta fucking shoehorn it in some some way. You can't just, you can't do it like Daniels and AJ, where they just keep asking for rematches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they already cashed in that chip, so. Here is the final four for the Bound for Glory series, my friends. My co-host. We start with Bully Ray. Yay. Then we move on to Robert Roode. I actually Yay. trusted in the that. Yeah, two and three spot works for me. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like if if they're just using this to put a surprise title on Bobby Roode, I'm not I'm not going to be opposed to this. I'd rather. Uh, the problem is though, if they put a title on Bobby Roode, it's going to break up beer money because. Russo loves that trope. He fucking lives that trope of breaking up tag teams when one guy is but, successful. I mean, I I would be opposed to that on principle, but at, but at the same time, the two are capable uh, are capable performers by themselves. Right, but it's such a bullshit way to end what has been the best tag team in TNA. I'd say even better than the Mercy. Yeah. Mm. Well, all together, I suppose. <sighs> After that, it is James Storm, as it stated before, and with the final 
Marker. Gunner. Here is everybody who is not. <laughs> that sounds painful. Here is the people who were deemed unworthy. Unworthy of being in this four-way match. Rob Van Dam. AJ Styles. Ugh. D'Angelo De Niro. And Samoa Joe. I didn't ask Scott Steiner because Scott Steiner shouldn't be sniffing this tournament, so I'm glad he didn't win. But, I actually know, I'm putting Scott Steiner back at that thing because I would love to hear the fucking rambling, fucked up promo he would be producing for the Bound for Glory series tournament matches. Yeah, wouldn't we all? Damn it, seven pictures <laughs> worth the promos. Exactly. <sighs> I can handle seeing Scott Steiner do a Billy to Billy six times, and I got to hear one of his rambling Sp- Steiner math promos about how he actually has double points than everybody else, because if you look at it this way, but, no. <laughs> Gunner. Oh, God. Gunner. And Bully Ray. Gunner. And, and the weird thing is, it, it's probably not going to be one of beer money that goes into this. I mean, I know there. I think, I think no matter what we're talking about. I think Immortal just censored Backlash for a second. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. Hogan, get off our fucking line. Go ahead, Backlash. Repeat that because we lost you for a second. Okay. All I said was, obviously the sensible thing is not to do heel versus heel, but remember who we're fucking talking about? <laughs> it's going to be either Bully Ray or Gunner. Probably Bully Ray. Yes, Gunner who... Who, if we want to, if we were on record of slamming other people, according to Bleacher Report, WWE needs Gunner. <laughs> wow. I don't know whether to laugh at that or, or fucking face pump. Apparently, WWE needs a guy whose backstory was is that he was a failed security guard. Look, my cat is here, and she's pissed about the Bound for Glory series. She is meowing at me in displeasure, and I cannot disagree with her. You hear that? That's how bad you are, TNA. My cat hates you, TNA. Crap! Don't, don't, don't uh, waste all your hatred because the next segment we're going to talk about is a is a bombshell. <laughs> uh, oh, well, boy! Want to take the honors? Please. Go right ahead. Okay. My Our next segment opens with. All of the knockouts coming down to the ring, which I actually got spoiled. Uh, I didn't watch this last night. I had to watch the recording, so I kind of knew it was coming. Only since that I knew what was going on in the storyline, I got surprised by everything else. First off, Mike Tanay introduces the knockouts by mentioning that Eric Bischoff was calling them all out to talk to them. And then he went on to talk about how it's not always easy to please, you know, a large group, you know, please pe- everyone, especially a bunch of women, pause, <laughs> who are, you know, working and struggling to get, you know, a title belt and in some cases careers. The pause is what pissed me off. So there's that. When we finally get into it, and Eric Bischoff comes down with uh, Tracy Brooks, Eric Eric starts off pretty well, kind of, you know, unhonest, talking about how all the knockouts are just some of the most talented women that he's ever had the pleasure of working with. Really, just, just a great bunch of gals. But that doesn't detract from the fact that they're all a bunch of stoop- or whiny bitches who can't keep their mouths shut and can't focus. Are you okay? <laughs> I don't like the sound of that distance. No. No. I hope. <laughs> I just had this as hard as I can. Oh. Yeah, that that was pretty much my reaction. It's it's the don't don't do it in reaction to TNA. It ain't worth it. No, no, it's not, man. You, there's already good. enough pain to to be in with. Don't. Oh, the pain. No, I'm okay. Okay, that, good. It hurts, though. <laughs> Then they pretty he pretty much goes on from there to explain that, you know, 
Tra- him and Tracy have been, you know, hanging out. And I, I, I haven't been watching the show, I'll admit. I've been very busy the last month. But apparently, how I got to find out that Tracy Brooks was, Brooks was around was that apparently she's been doing nothing but fucking Eric Bischoff in the hopes of a job. Mm. So the in Silver the- Fox having sex. Who's <sighs> that bitch with you guys for the rest of the I night? the Silver Fox was Kevin Nash. <laughs> They're all and, dead old fucks that shouldn't be having sex, is what I'm saying. And you know, I, I, I feel the, compelled to point this out, that the whole insinuation is that Tracy Brooks is banging Eric Bischoff when they've completely forgotten, when they've completely forgotten that they've already established that she's Kazarian's wife. <laughs> Ooh, and yeah, Kazarian is not getting screen time. I almost wonder if we should do a segment about that. Oh, oh yeah. We haven't seen Kazarian in the longest time. Nah, but go, last I go saw him, he was trying to get Eric or er, Eric Young to leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> but go ahead. So basically, after- what we're to take from this is that women, in general, are a bunch of whiny, unfocused whores. Who all secretly? That's all I got from this. Who, and you know oh, what? Go ahead. I get that TNA has, you know, the the people behind the scenes with TNA, you know, the knockouts division has been screwed over many times for God knows what reason. I understand that wrestling, there's, there's misogyny to be had. WWE isn't clean of it either. But this is the most blatant thing, the most blatant case of misogyny on television I've ever seen in my goddamn life. And you know what? TNA, Eric Bischoff, fuck you. Fuck you for everything. Just, no. You know, the reason these women act like this is because the company makes them. This is the characters and the cards they've been given. You don't get to do this shit unless you actually want to give some of them a chance to be decent people. I would also like to say I agree completely with my co-host, but she should also have added Vince Russo because he's the one who books the shit. Well, him and a bunch of other people, but he, he's he's been notoriously like reported as not thinking women can get over, even though they were they were being even though uh, from what the I the massive women issue <sighs> this guy has. Good fucking lord! I, I believe oh. our I believe our colleague Jingus expressed it as what what girl wasn't didn't fuck him in high school. Yeah. And me, yeah. Like, I. Uh, but this is deep rooted. This you can make a whole fucking thesis on what the fuck is wrong with Vince Russo and women. This, this is this is fucking so. This is getting sociopathic. I mean, I wasn't watching, but it's like, need anyone remind anyone else that fucking Russo was against the knockouts when they were making some of the TNA's highest ratings, and they were their main event, and they were. What's what's really sad is is that everybody was against the knockouts when they had success. Because apparently everybody in TNA is thin dicked pieces of shit. Either that or have as much social graces and self esteem as a fucking rat. Either that or they're also jingoist against uh, uh, fat Canadian people. That's sort of. That's the other problem that I have is that, okay, I get it. Vince Russo, you know leader of creative, he's the reason why all of the knockouts are pretty much harpy bitches. The only exception being, oh god, Mickey, Nikki James gets to be a decent person. And that's only Although she doesn't have much of a personality to speak of. Yeah, Velvet that's, Sky has been, and that's, eh, and that's only considerable. because she's from WWE, so she gets the freedom to basically book her own character. I mean, per- Well, the only reason Velvet Sky has been toned down is because she's not really on television that much anymore. Only- I think the only one, oh, the only not, uh, female performer that has the the right to act like that is Madison Rain because she owns it. She does it very very well. <laughs> That's one thing, you know. Madison Rain is basically the bitchy prom queen. You know, she. Yeah. I I actually kind of like Madison Rain as that kind of character. It's well, everyone that's, else. That's, that's, They're yeah. all one like thing that. I want to say very positive about, about positive about Madison Rain is is that. She is the bitchy, but then the flip side, she's also a massive coward. You see how she freaks out, like the spider thing. 
I mean, she's playing the character of the bitchy but completely cowardly uh, prom queen, which is a bit of a stock character, but a good character nonetheless. Everybody else is just a fucking evil lesbian. That's what Vince Russo thinks women are. Evil lesbians. Women issues, man. Good fucking lord. But, but yeah, like as, as I was saying, you know, I, I get that a lot of that the reason why the characters are so bad and so terribly misogynistic in the end is because of Russo. That's one thing. When you have Eric Bischoff, when you actually have other fucking people doing it too, no. You don't get to say this shit on television. It's 2011. This shit shouldn't be allowed. But we need this to move is, on. This yeah, is like, like, As if I wasn't pissed off enough and, already. And also, like, to mention something, not to downplay, like, that, that value of of this of the promo that he cuts what it also kind of does and what's the problem with the way they're handling both the X division and the knockouts division is that him slamming them all like collectively turns them face they like the, the crowd gains some sympathy for them because they're all in the same boat of, of being slammed and completely marginalized by Eric Bischoff the problem with this is that they're still having matches against each other except for against representatives of Eric Bischoff. And thus, it's all haphazard and no- nothing makes sense. Speaking of turning all of the uh, knockouts face, we find out who's going to be the VP of the knockouts. It's not going to be Tracy Brooks. No, it's Karen Jarrett. Because I wasn't angry enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> My head hurts. Jeez, you sound like Billy from Black Christmas. <laughs> just to kind of explain why this just made my night or my day that much fucking worse. I hate Karen Jarrett. I don't know why. Oh There's yeah, just something about her. I, I noticed every time I see her, I want to punch her in the fucking face. For comparison, Vicky Guerrero, whose entire character is to make people find her as annoying as possible. I love her. <laughs> so I'm happy to see her. I don't find her annoying at all. I actually find her a very fun villain. But Karen Jarrett, I want dead most days. And think about the levels of stupid that that is on this. At the beginning of the night, Angle allied himself with the mortal because he's pissed at Jeff and Karen. And now he's allied with Jeff and Karen. I know. It's it's really it's 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 really quite amazing. So Karen Jarrett comes Karen Jarrett comes out and cuts her I'm Karen Jarrett and I'm so much fucking better than you hoes promo that we've heard a billion times over and everybody wants to hit her, but she can't. And then really to twist the screws, makes Tracy Brooks her executive assistant i.e. slave, and we're basically having the rehash of Mass and Rain and Tara. Except, well, at least this makes a bit more sense, because there was no point during the Tara, Mass, and Rain thing that Tara couldn't just simply snap Mass and Rain's neck and leave her for dead in the backstage. So this is a bit better, but it's still Karen Jarrett. Yeah, and another thing she does is she speaks to ODB and, and Jacqueline, specifically, and she says, oh, I hired you to the roster, and that also implies to me that, okay, she hired them, she she likes them, she associates their heels again, even after helping Velvet Sky fairly clean without any 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 hint of, of them st- still being heel. It makes no sense. Well, then she said, well, we're going to have to discuss uh, your behavior. Ah. So I don't see anything actually coming of that. And if no, does, no, no, no. You're, I, you're you're right about that. Oh dear God! I don't want to talk about this segment anymore. I think my brain is leaking out the side of my ears. That's it's all there is to be said. Yeah, it's been it's that's been true. run through. Let's let's move on to something that's funny. Austin Aries and Kid Cash versus Kendrick and Saracen. Oh yeah, oh, Brian Kendrick now comes out to basic what's what's a XP of. Uh, of D- if anyone knows the the Electric Six song uh, "Danger High Voltage," you know "Fire in the Disco." He, he used to come out to that in, in Ring of Honor. So they're doing for some reason. Yeah. The timing of this is just I, I yeah. don't know. He was also yeah. Virginia. I think I think everybody knows what we're thinking. <laughs> Brian Kendrick comes out in his Alibaba pants, which we've come to expect, 
I couldn't quite see his shoes, but he is wearing shoes now. So that's oh, yeah, Mike Tanay put that over. Yes. Yes, because they're flesh-colored, so you can't really tell. <laughs> this oh, really strange gosh. headdress. I want to say it's a weird mix of Roman and Native American is the best way I can describe it. I'm an international studies uh, person in college, so that's the way I look at it. And a loincloth with a crescent and a star on it. Like the Islamic crescent and the star of David. Whatever the fuck that means. Uh, yeah, I, I spent... Maybe, maybe Kendrick is lobbying for peace in Israel? I don't know. Well, that's, that's a very commendable goal. I would not put that kind of message on my loincloth. Especially a loincloth being worn outside his pants. Well, crazy Kendrick. God damn it, Kendrick! Go back to Price is Right. You looked normal on that show. Yeah, he st- he still did the the uh, the Brian Kendrick dance though, which was <laughs> 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 trying to hold on to something. Um, you know what? After that, I'm gonna go on record and say I fucking loved Brian Kendrick because he was making me happy after that horseshit we just dealt with. I was too busy being pissed off, and then I saw him, and I was very confused. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I digress. Like, if if I could say one thing about this match, I I I'll give I'll give props to Jesse Sorensen. He's playing the rookie role really well, where he's like full of high energy, and he's, he's like doing blue, he's doing the blue chipper. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's not a bad performer whatsoever. Like he, he there was this good I, spot. Where he drop kicked uh, he drop kicked both uh, Cash and Aries with with his two legs. Even though we sometimes ask, I loved everybody in this match. Yeah, I'm, yeah, this yeah. was this was really enjoyable and definitely a godsend after what I had just seen. You know, so, good way uh, to cheer me up. Put some exhibition guys out there. The, o- the only awkward thing was when they did that sort of tandem spot where, like, the, people are doing, like, a power bomb off the top rope and then someone else is cinched in a suplex. Like, it looked a little bit awkward, but... but yeah, they-, they did the Tower of Power spot, and I'm pretty sure none of them really knew how to sell it. Yeah, and I don't think they should have done it in the first place because I fucking hate spots like that. <laughs> I hate those. But fair enough. So it ends with... Uh... Cash got the missile clothesline and went for a power bomb, but Sorison quickly rolled him up and got the one two three on him. Very rookie win, which I think yeah. really is the yeah. first character. That's that's the kind of thing you do with with these people, these plucky rookies. Mm-hmm. So we go back to uh, more knockout stuff. Uh, oh yeah. Well, first yeah, there... we start with uh, Mickey James, and to be fair, this wasn't bad. She basically just says she's sick of all this weird magic horse shit that uh, Winter keeps trying to pull, and she's going to basically beat the snot out of her. And, she, and she's not going to uh, see how good she is as real champion. Mi- oh, that's a, that's a good promo. Fucking Mickey, J- <laughs> Mickey James goes, I just don't believe any of this voodoo bullshit. Do you believe it, Mac? <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on from that... Oh, boy, they're hyping the return of Jeff Hardy next week. Woo, boy! Yeah, he's... I he's, can't wait to hear that. He's repentant. <sighs> repentant. Well, who cares? They're just going to turn him heel again. Yeah, no, yeah, they are. And that actually is kind of... That kind of makes me angry. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's not how you turn someone heel. Like, it was like, oh, I led you by the hand thinking that, I, that I'd change, but I'm going to come to match his drug once more. I'm going to have another two-second match with Sting where he makes me job like a bitch. But anyway, so we we move on after learning that our great friend Jeff Hardy's coming back. And that Kurt Angle is fucking ranting. He's he's basically, he's, 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 he's uh, having Hulk. some bro paranoia Hulk. with Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan says that Sting isn't good enough, brother. We gotta go New York, and you gotta kill the whole network. So apparently, Kurt Angle is going to suplex or angle slam or ankle lock or whatever Spike TV. Just a bunch I, of random suits. <laughs> I, I would love. To, I would love to see like. Oh fuck! 
Whoever the fucking narrator is for Mansers take eating an angle slam and getting put in an ankle lock. <laughs> <laughs> ah, are they, ah, my ankle! Or those, uh, and um, takes out everyone on to Deadly's Warrior. Yeah, those... Oh, um, yes! Let's... Fucking yes! <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, but then the, then the chunky would say, say, oh, but Randy Orton's RKO is better, man. I gotta give the edge to that. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. And in, in terms of Jeff Hardy, also like after Mike Tenney is very schizophrenic about the the whole thing because like he promotes it as like Hardy making mistakes and give, having one more chance, and then like after the whole Angle Hogan thing about we're gonna we're gonna punch us some suits, uh, he says he says, oh, I'm really shocked that they're gonna give Hardy a live mic. <laughs> like, we, Does anyone have spoilers for that show yet? No, I don't want to look at spoilers. I want to. I, I want to hear it live. Oh God, I I I just gotta know what the hell happens. I don't oh, care yeah. if I see it live or not. I just gotta know. I actually remember reading spoilers in that like the, he it, it Jeff came off pretty well. Like that's all. Oh, that's, that's all I got. Well, um, we're gonna have to I'm find sure hold it together for a week. Yes, I'm sure Jeff. Uh, I'm sure the uh, the holds for a little bit, but uh, so yes. We move on to the TNA Knockouts match, the champ match, another title match on free TV, Winter versus Mickey James. With a pay-per-view coming. Yes. Just why not? <laughs> yeah, this not a bad match. Um, they, unfortunately, like I felt like Mickey James did most of the fucking work. She she was she did most of the offense. Like I don't think Winter had. Really, and it had too many, uh, too many impressive spots, and like most of her shit was just like getting Angelina involved. But I thought that was actually pretty funny when Angelina tried to get involved, and she, she like literally throws the belt into the ring for Winter to catch it, and then Earl fucking Hebner like scores an interception and throws her out. <laughs> Earl fucking Hebner. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Well, I noticed that kind of became a theme that the refs are actually physically trying to stop interference rather than just staring at it and going, "Oh, DQ." No, it's just Earl. <laughs> yeah, it's really just Earl. Even even though last year, like after after they had that Orlando screw job with fucking Angle and uh, AJ, he was like, "I just screw people because I like screwing people and I like money." And then suddenly now he's just one of the freaking. Most uh, honorable refs in yeah. TNA now. He's basically the he's the untouchable now. He's effectively the untouchable ref. Easy. But yes, I actually loved Earl Hebner with the masterful pick. But because of that, uh, I believe uh, Winter actually gets uh, quite a bit of offense in because of the distraction. Mm-hmm. Really Not bad. that it did her much good. Winter went for another uh, weapon. She went for a piece of fabric to choke her. Mickey stopped that, smoked her with the chick t- kick, and then got the pin. On free TV, we have a title change. Your winner and new knockouts champion just tossing the belt between each other, Mickey James. Well, dude, it's happened before, and mostly it involves Sting, so. I don't and it was stupid it. then, and it's stupid now. Thank you, Backlash. Thank you very much. What's kind of funny is that, like I said before, I haven't really had time to watch the show lately. Winter's title reign was so short and pointless, I didn't get to see it. <laughs> we must have, I, I literally have not seen any shows with her as champion. We must have, I think we missed something, because I remember there was a Winter promo where she was talking about how that no, we, we did belt. miss a promo. It was more. It was just more of her talking to Angelina about how you know fate, destiny. I'm a vampire. I, we've been reincarnated. We're soulmates. <sighs> well, just grab stupid the, bullshit. Just grab the strap on, Russo. We know you want to do it. We, you know, we know you want to just fucking have full on lesbianism. Just fucking do mm. it, Russo. Piece of shit. This would be great stuff for you know some really shitty dime novel. <laughs> Well, you know what they what they or probably fanfic. will end up doing? What they will probably end up doing, and cringe when you think about this, they want to get these bitches in the sunlight so they can break out the sparkles. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an episode of Dark Match if I don't say so. 
something that pisses Mel Leaf right the fuck off. That would actually explain why every time Winter and Angelina are together, they only seem to have just a single candle's worth of light in any of the scenes they're together, unless it's out on the ring. They're building up to the sparkles. They're they're also building up to uh you you hear just like you see the shadow of a bed and and it's rocking and then the bed breaks and. <laughs> Fuck you, Russo! Seriously. Do they have the much for that much body glitter? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's no, a lot gonna, of fucking glitter. You know what they're going to do, duos? They're going to make Winter and Angelina pay for it themselves. No, I think they should just like or they'll just stick rhinestones to her face, or, or all over all over her body, and she'll she'll be the unofficial white queen of uh, TNA. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Anyways, okay. uh, so after that, we get the joys of Matt Morgan coming to the ring. Yay. He's yes, like, because he wasn't entertaining enough during the Bound for Glory match. No, he's pissed. He's furious. He's angry. He's calling out Joe. He doesn't like the fact that Joe's ruining the Bound for Glory series. Not the Bound for Glory series. It's such a time-honored tradition. How dare Samoa Joe fuck with that thing we've been doing for three months? How dare <laughs> And isn't Matt Morgan still supposed to be on the injured list? Yeah. Great way selling whatever the fuck he was injured. What was he supposed to be injured with? Was Torn he pectoral. Going yeah, TNA. He doesn't have the it, sling anymore, which yeah. admittedly makes sense, but still, it doesn't. It seems like the injury's gone. I guess so. Fuck. Well, at least it was something saying. Knowing TNA now, they probably said his heart has literally been ruptured into two pieces by something. But he comes back the next week. <laughs> or his lungs. Or his he coughed up his lungs or some stupid shit like that. They brought him back as a zombie. <laughs> Don't give them ideas. I go with it. Anyways, Joe comes out and uh, he's basically attacking anybody who's around him because he's, mm, I'm mean, I'm Samoa Joe. I'm going to be fucking leaving this company in three months, so screw all you motherfuckers. So then they just fight. Matt Morgan and Samoa Joe brawl throughout everywhere. What's interesting about this is that there wasn't really any official match going on, but Samoa Joe made damn sure to knock the ref into the barrier as fast as possible. <laughs> which took the ref out for the entire segment. Because apparently... Did Matt Morgan bring out the ref? I can't remember. There was a ref, and Samoa Joe pushes him into the barrier. The guy rolls into the barrier and apparently knocked himself out. <laughs> a oh, it's a ref. Referees will take out any of these referees. It's a ref. They really need to get. They need to either institute a fitness policy or just give them some armor. Have them show up in that bear cot suit. But yeah. Needs- in case you guys didn't know, the refs are pretty much... Any ref is pretty much Mr. Glass in kayfabe terms. Pretty much. So, uh, after that, we get Robbie E. and Rob Terry together. Oh, God, I'd head desk again if it wouldn't kill me. Well, well no. that was there's, Rob Terry, wasn't it? There's a yeah. fight involved in this promo. Well, yeah, there, there was Eric Young, who was there for like five seconds promoting the match, that he's he's finally de- officially defending the television title again. I mean, I know I enjoyed the Scott Bayo storyline, but god damn it. It would be time. nice to see the man do some actual wrestling. Yeah. You know that he's dropping hard to Robbie E, though. Uh, mm. You know Robbie E is going to be our new television champion. No, I don't and, think so. I don't know about that. And then because he's the television champion, he's going to form his own Jersey Shore click. For some reason, I get the distinct feeling that ratings go up whenever an Eric Young segment plays. Oh, no question. Just because, like, I don't, yeah, I don't think they would have kept airing that shit if it wasn't doing good. Uh, that I have to say, I fucking love Eric Young's hobo beard. He is that hobo beard. <laughs> that beard, my God. <laughs> it looks so full. It looks like you could like hide shit in there and it would never be seen again. For and extra I, fun, I, I, go ahead. For, for extra fun, during pretty much the entire time that he was on camera, he had weightlifting equipment above his head, like an entire bench. Yeah, he, was he was lifting that. 
<laughs> he was just holding the bench above his head. And he looks fucking ripped. He must be really working out hard. Because he looks as big as I've ever seen him. You guys agree? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He looks much bigger than he was, say, Team Canada or World Elite. I don't care. He's Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Um, don't 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 misconstrue. No, I, I don't know why I said that. Part of Team Canada. No, he, t- he means Rob Terry. Oh, about who's in Mexican America? And then think about what you just complained about. <laughs> what? What are we talking about? I don't know. I, I, I think on? I think we're we've uh, some somewhere along the lines of miscommunication occurred. Yes, Probably. that was not my fault. <laughs> I'm kidding. Also, um, <laughs> no, I will not go back to that fucking Karen Jarrett segment, even though there's something there I wanted to mention. But uh, backstage, once again, it's more of the uh, massive, massive uh, desire undertones between AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. Our second married couple. <laughs> <laughs> and these two just kiss already and get it over with? Yes. Well, they, they, hey, if the lesbians don't get to actually go that far, nobody does. We gotta keep things fair. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels are far better than any of the lesbians are. More interesting relationship, to say the least. No question. Lots of passion and history and all that jazz. It's almost time, and he's not going to hold... AJ is not going to hold back... He, be, he No, sorry, that... Christopher Daniels better not hold back because he won't. Bounce, 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 wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Um, Seriously, it, this has to be an accident. This has so to, it is. This must just be writing this. Everybody's looking behind him with like the uh, kind of concerned faces, and Russo's completely oblivious that he's booking Brokeback Mountain to the wrestling arena. Maybe War Machine is sending in suggestions and just has to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. So, uh, after we get past that, once again, lots of sexual tension on TNA. <laughs> lots of sexual tension. Did you know, 20% off everything on Shop TNA this week. Yeah, yeah I, that, that sounds kinky to me. Um, Don West <laughs> pimping the crap out of shop TNA. Don West, that, that's that's what I think of when I when I think of uh, when I think of uh, Steamy. But um, the the Jeff Hardy's being his name is being circulated around backstage once again. Like Styles brings that up with Christopher Daniels, and <laughs> it's kind of funny because AJ makes a comment like and he's like, well, I guess I guess in life it's it's just all about third fourth chances, you know. <laughs> Probably more than that with with Jeff. Oh, Jeff! If you count his old his first TNA stint, good lord. But anyways, uh, moving on, we finally get the uh, Christopher Daniels AJ Styles rematch on free TV. Well, actually, um, before that, Hogan is bitching about Jeff Hardy now, and he's they're, they're, since there's only one of him and seven of Immortal, they're they're gonna probably be a a presence around his return. So. Now it's oh, yes. and that reminds me when uh, he called for all the Immortals to basically group up. Abyss just stood there looking kind of confused. He's I uh, guess I guess he's going to be breaking up from Immortal. I guess yeah, essentially. And, and that's what I wanted to see. It's fucking it's, Abyss face turn. It's only because, as, as subtle as the opening to Heavy Rain. Some someone's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so after that, we get to the Christopher Daniels AJ Styles match on free TV yet again. Is there really more that needs to be said? They've had so many matches together that's yeah, they're great, but there's only yeah, so many. It's nice. Well, it's like I feel about this the same way I was I felt about Christian versus Orton uh, last night when I was talking about that. Like basically, yeah, love both performers. We got pulled to get against. Do not hold them against the fact that that like this their match has been done like over and over and over and over. But yeah, 
It's always fun to see him in old it, spots. It's a good match. It's just we've seen it um, like yeah. 10 billion times already. Plus, I didn't feel that Daniels was enough of a presence. Like, once again, there, there's no, there's no, like, heel or face here. But EJ seemed to be the aggressor for, for the most part. The only, thi- the only thing that we really need to point out is the fucking finish. That that was kind of weird because obviously, uh, you know, AJ uh, was trying to get on top or to the top rope to do something. He slipped and he fell hard. That that was one hell of a botch. And um, then, no, I think that was immediately. Daniels got the pin. Not off the move, mind you. Off of AJ Styles slipping off the top of the rope. Yeah, it's like they we don't want to have two seconds to do the Angels' wings. Uh, but um, I, that, that wasn't a botch, though. It, it, yeah, I yeah. Think no, I, I, there's no way that could have been planned. That had to. Have yeah, been. no, he slipped. Well, anyway, so we'll find out later. But what I find more interesting is that Daniels starts celebrating like he just won the heavyweight championship. Yeah, I mean, and AJ he, goes to I shake his like, hand, and Daniel just doesn't want to have it. He's just going to keep celebrating. Yells into the camera that he won. Yeah, Daniels, you pinned a guy who fell off the ropes. You're a badass. Is that a heel turn? I guess. Because <laughs> if it is, that's the weakest heel turn I've ever seen. Honestly, at this point, what did you expect? Well, I was expecting it to happen, but good God. Can... Look, I get that everyone has a healer face turn like once a week. But I think... damn it, at least pretend that they're still interesting and that it's a big deal, even if you've telegraphed it for the past. How long has Christopher Daniels been back? Six, seven months. Yeah, I... basically the entire time. Honestly, like, I'm going to say something about this that, that has the potential to amuse me very much. I don't think he's going to turn full heel in that he's going to be such, like, a, a for, like a force to be reckoned with against AJ Styles. I think he's just going to be kind of a dick now. Like, they're going to still have their same locker room segments, and, and, and he's going to be like, by the way, remember when I won last week? <laughs> and just playfully, like, not even to, like, stick it to him, just... Playfully, because he's so happy about the fact that he finally went over AJ. Hasn't he beaten AJ before? Probably. I I don't. There's there's so only so much that I know about the uh, TNA. Fair enough. Let's move on to the end. Kurt Angle versus Sting with Hogan as the enforcer. Ooh, and mm. surprisingly, um, but for for they, this was what like seven to nine minutes and. They, they made they made uh, the most of it. I guess that's being right. optimistic. It is. <laughs> Barry, you are so optimistic. Sorry. <laughs> um, like I, I specifically, I like the spot where Sting was going to do the the old splash in the corner, and then Angle catches him and suplexes him. Happens all the time, but it was it was kind of nice. Mm. So yeah, so the finish comes. Uh, Sting nails the deathlock. Uh, uh, he's, he has the death lock on uh, Angle. Hulk Hogan uh, calls for Gunner to come up with the chair, but Brian Hebner just intercepts that. He stops him dead, and Gunner kind of looks at him like, oh, I don't know what the fuck to do. So Angle is tapping. <laughs> Hebner misses it because he's dealing with uh, Gunner. And can I say that on this spot, Brian Hebner really had to try and not look at the match because it, it, what what did looked like was that he and Gunner were having a staring contest. <laughs> it was that sloppy in execution. Especially considering that Angle was clearly hitting with his whole force, the tapping out. So I, you could probably have felt that in the impact zone, let alone being in the ring with it. But whatever, uh, Sting... Uh, Hogan nails Sting with the chair... And Sting no-sells it, which leads to my joke that Hulk Hogan is so fucking weak, when he hits guys with chairs, they don't hurt anymore. And, 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 wait, the hilarious part about this, Gunner is standing on the outside wondering, the boss is in trouble, should I do something? <laughs> <laughs> I should do something. I should do something. I should do something. Oh, no, we did that something. joke last night. Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, oh, no. 
someone mentioned on Twitter that the chair shot that Angle, I mean, excuse me, that Hogan delivered looked like a, a pillow. <laughs> it really <laughs> did. And Sting sold it as such. But then uh, Hogan throws down the chair in just the right spot. Angle sneaks up behind him, grabs him, drops him with the angle slam on the chair, and Angle wins. Then suddenly, all of Immortal comes rushing out to beat the crap out of Sting. And then guess who makes the save? Mr. Anderson. The person who hated Sting for how long? Anderson. <laughs> Complete with a baseball bat, which, by the way, <laughs> symbolism! <laughs> Making his second shocking return. Yeah, in, a week, in two weeks. It's amazing how he keeps making returns like that. That's quite the talent. Oh, yes. During the uh, Immortal Beatdown, Abyss just watched from the sides. So I guess that is a sign that he's turning face. Because if there's one thing TNA needed, it was face Abyss. Hogan. I'm not feeling very confident right now. I don't know if I can bear the responsibility of being your, your protege. <laughs> Maybe he can't stand being known as the X-rated wrestler, as Hogan likes to call him. The X-rated, ooh. That, that's kind of just... See, in my mind, X-rated is more associated with porn than with uh, violence. So. <laughs> yes, but apparently that means Hogan is calling Abyss the next TNA porn star. <laughs> Ooh, back to hey. the abyss. Ooh. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ooh, isn't that isn't that a fucking thing of night terrors? Oh, yes, fuck. thank you for that. <laughs> oh, all right. Enough of that. It's time for what's get more screen time than Jay Lethal. Oh Christ. Um, matches that should have been on uh, No Surrender get more screen time than Jay Lethal. Not more. Um. Uh, I gotta go with my football back. Keep time traveling lesbian witches still get more screen time than Jay Lethal. I'm gonna be the downer tonight. Blatant fucking misogyny gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna down in the new millennium. <laughs> Karen Jarrett's uh, remix of Jeff Jarrett's theme with added drums gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Oh god, I did not think they could make that theme any more annoying. Oh my! It's basically, but of course, it's for Karen. Yeah, it's yes. basically like the same, like nah, 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 except like there's a dum 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 beat. Next. Yeah, there's somebody who can't play drums playing in the background. It's horrible. Yeah. It doesn't suit her to begin with, and tossing suits. I'm not looking forward to having to hear that. Oh, God knows uh, how often. God, every but week. That every reminds week. me. No. That reminds me. Why on earth is Karen Jarrett against Rosita and Sarita when they basically work for Jeff now because they're part of Mexican-American? Because she's better than everyone else and she's the fucking queen bee and this is why I don't like her. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is been... Actually, actually, before oh. we finish that, I, I mentioned, the, like I said, a lot of these matches should have been on No Surrender. Here's all they have announced as of right oh. now, according to Wikipedia, at least. We've got Bully Ray versus James Storm, Bobby Roode versus Gunner, Matt Morgan versus Samoa Joe, and Brian Kendrick versus Austin Aries for the X Division title. Aries is going to win. Not a match. championship match. <laughs> there's not a heavyweight championship match on yeah, this card. Aries is probably going to. Uh, I guess there's there's probably not going to be a heavyweight championship match because Sting's. Since they're doing the back floor series, Sting's going to be busy uh, dealing with Flair and Hogan. Oh, you know what? What the hell's the main event? You know what this means? They're ripping off uh, ROH because Davey Richards won't be at Death Before Dishonor. So <laughs> the main event's probably going to be Sting, but or uh, Sting, Hogan Sting and without, Flair. No, Sting and Hogan. Sting and Flair's on free TV. Really? Yes, it is. No, Sting and, oh yeah, Sting and Hogan would be at Bound for... Wait a minute, wait a minute. If, that would mean, if Flair won, there wouldn't, there'd be no match. Yes. What would they do with that slot? 
Hogan would be talking about how great he is for about 25 minutes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a microcosm of TNA. This has been the Dark Match. I'm the Revolver Man. I'm Christopher Sesson, currently uh, staring at Jimmel's new avatar. I'm Backlash, I think. I, I'm Joe's Angel, and wow. The lack of logic has broken me, finally. Good night Fuck. and good luck. You need it for TNA. Cue music! It happens to the best of us.